Hi folks, welcome to another edit. This time you are going to see one of the tougher edits that I have done so far. You may recognize the picture, this is Water Rising. So here we go, going in for adjustment levels and popping over the mid-tones because I mean as you saw this picture is quite dark right from the start. Testing and curving in just a little bit here and there, but decided to pull a little bit of the midtones out, and now I am going down to curves. Curves pulls everything up at once, so for this image being so dark, this is what I'm going to use. There we go. I've got my mid-tones figured out for this image. Now going in with selective color and to my neutral tones. And I'm lightening up my neutral tones just a little bit just to pull in a little bit more of my image. I mean, as you saw, this is a very dark image, so it's gonna it was a toughie trying to get all the lightness into this piece. Now I'm pulling in my darks just a little bit to readjust the contrast since I lost a lot of it with the mid-tone shifting. A little adjustment here and there with both of those tools. Now going in with my reds and adjusting my reds for skin tones mostly. This will help with one of the major problems with this picture which is grain. There is a lot of grain left over in this image from the huge shift from the darks to the lights. Now going in with yellows and adjusting my yellows, which also messes with skin tones and as you just saw there, a lot of the background as well. Now I'm just checking over the image here and there, making sure there's no major flaws on me or the dress and now I'm going up to my face and as you can see there is a lot of uh, grain left over from the dark image shift in the face. Luckily a lot of this isn't going to be very visible except for a close in because this is such a large image too. I'm not front and center. check myself over. One thing I have to deal with with an image where my face is so grainy is I really have to pump up my makeup and just general facial features in order to kind of remove the grain from my viewers focus. Now I'm just kind of going in and touching up my eyes um, mostly adjusting the kind of eyeliner of my eyes to really make it nice and dark. I also go in and you may see me do this in a second, I I have fairly thin eyebrows so when I am touching myself up I tend to push my eyebrows in just a little bit to make them feel a little fuller. This is unnecessary for models who have nice thick eyebrows already though. In future tutorials, I will go into more depth with makeup. In this shoot, I'm really just trying to bring in my facial features and make them look a little less fuzzy since I had to bring in so many light tones to make this image more appealing. Just 
adjusting the lips, darkening them up, giving them a little more impact. Again, going through with the eyes, really touching those up, making them making sure they stand out more than that grain you see on my face. Now I'm going to go through and highlight um, just my general face, the facial side of my body where the front of the corset is. This just kind of adds a little more contrast to my face, which is ideal in this situation since I had to pull so much in for this image. So I just added a little bit more to the mid-tones. I use mid-tones when I'm adjusting skin most of the time because it's a lot... It brings in less color and it just kind of adjusts the overall brightness. Now I am going through and lightening up some of the mid-tones on my body and face and this might help a little bit with some of the grain which was likely more in the mid-tone range and a little bit of shadow. And now I'm going back through and I am shadowing up the dress adding adding more darks to add to the contrast of the folds of the dress. And you notice I'm doing this with my dodge and burn tools because it gives me a lot more control over the area I'm covering with these highlights and shadows. Going back through and just kind of doing some touch up, going back and forth with the lights and the darks until I find a level of contrast that I like overall. In an image like this, I use the burn and dodge tools more often because there's so little contrast after I pulled those mediums in that I have to re-add a lot of the highlights and shadows to this image. Now I am adjusting brightness and contrast. I don't always use these settings because sometimes they can be a little extreme and they can do too much overall adjustments over all the colors. But sometimes, if it works out with an image, I'll give it a shot. I'm going in with color balance. These tools are fun to mess around with. I suggest you go in if you have a chance to use this. And just kind of pull the cyans and reds and magentas, greens, yellows, blues around because you can learn a lot just by messing with these kind of scrolling tools. One good thing to remember about color balance, and as you look here at your actual color listings, you've got cyan versus red, magenta versus green, and yellow versus blue. When using these colors, you can actually use a brush and pick a color to brush over an image with, and as long as you have it in a very thin layer, you can adjust very specific areas. And you will see this in some later edits. Now I've gone back in with curves again, and I'm really trying to pump in my, my contrast. The lights versus darks. This isn't the actual image I have up on DeviantArt right now. This is, was a second edit. So the one up on DeviantArt, from what I remember, has a bit more of a yellow overall feel to the image. And this one is a little more lacking on that. Going back in with Selective Color. Adjusting my reds. Now going into hands to adjust the dress. And blues again to adjust the dress, as you can see there.
You're seeing a little bit of me experimenting right now. Sometimes it takes a little nudging to find out what I'm really going for. Now, back in brightness and contrast. With an image that started off at such an extreme, I'm really trying to work back in a lot of my contrast and kind of pull in some more color. Going in with color balance again. And if you guys are ever wondering what the general tools are that I'm using if you miss something in the video, so you can look down in my comment section and I usually list the general um, tool extensions where, where you can find the tools I use in this video and all of the tools that I use in this video. So if you're interested in or you missed something when I was moving along through these, you can go look down there and that should have a full list of everything I use for each edit. So there we go. From dark to bright. This image is a pretty extreme edit, but I will say that there are more extreme ones coming in the future. Um, but as far as pushing an image, this one got pushed very far. If this edit helped you, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more edits in the future. Also, if you think it would help others, feel free to pass this edit along so that others can see my editing as well. If you edit one of your own photos using the techniques you learned from this video, send me a before and after image and I may feature your editing in a future video. Read more about it below.